If you know our channel, we love everything and anything related to performance cars. So for us, EVs are something that don't really generate too much interest. But when it comes to Tata, they're charging the lead for electric vehicles to be more accessible in India. The latest product, the Nexon EV Max, it gets a bigger battery and produces more driving range. So our patriotism for our country came through and we wanted to test out the latest cutting edge of what India can offer. So we planned a trip all the way from Mahabaleshwar to Thane which is in Mumbai with the Nexon EV Max. Here's how it panned out. When we left Bagicha corner, our battery percentage was 49% and the range was roughly 140 km. Now this was a short coming on our end since we didn't plan our journey properly. Thus we were struggling a little bit on the range side of things but since we were coming down from Mahabaleshwar, we put the regenerative brakes to their most aggressive setting and instead of losing charge, the regen brakes were actually able to maintain the battery levels very well. Once we completed the ghats and touched the highway, our battery percentage only dropped by 1%. But once we were on the highway, our inner child was awakened and we popped the car into sports mode and the Nexon EV goes from a sedate family crossover to something that genuinely baffles you. Of course, putting it into sports mode means we burned through the battery quite quickly, so we had to make a quick pit stop to charge up the battery. So we stopped near Balewadi in Pune to give the Nexon EV Max a final charge before our last stint in the journey. One thing that you will have to face as an EV owner are the multiple different apps that you have to download in order to charge your electric vehicle. But Tata has their own uh, charging network which makes it very easy to charge your Nexon EV Max because you have uh, a slew of Tata apps which basically indicate the different locations of those charging stations. So we plugged in the car and we put in about 980 rupees into this new application that we downloaded and we left the car at the charging station for one hour. Now the key to driving an electric vehicle in India especially is that you have to pre-plan your journeys. Now us being rookies and noobs in the electric vehicle space that was our first mistake that's why we had to stop so many times to charge the vehicle. We had to stop once in the morning and now once again before we left for uh, Mumbai from Pune. So if we had properly planned out our journey that wouldn't have been the case especially because the infrastructure and charging stations in India are still a work in progress. But in theory after a couple of years when the infrastructure is a little bit stronger you will be able to drive your electric vehicle all across India just like any other IC engine car. So because the Nexon EV Max is equipped with regenerative brakes, it is a little numb on the brake pedal feel. But that is something that you will get used to and in fact it's a very characteristic trait of any electric vehicle which has been fitted with regen brakes. But if you're a person who's jumping directly from a petrol or a diesel or any IC engine car into an electric vehicle with regen brakes, yes, it might be very intimidating at first, but you will definitely get used to it. If you're a regular EV user, I'm pretty sure you can relate to this because 90% of the time you won't be using the brake pedal itself. You will be using the regen braking in order for your car to slow down or stop or halt or whatever it is. And the last 10%, well, you will get used to the brake pedal feel once you start driving the car on a daily basis so that is nothing really to worry about
So it's been a couple of days since we've tested out the Tata Nexon EV Max. We've driven it for I think 633 kilometers that's at least on paper but let's give or take 50 kilometers and round off the total figure to 700 kilometers. So we charged the Tata Nexon EV Max a total of four different times. So we're going to show you the breakdown between what if the same happens with the diesel car and a petrol car. So let's first talk about the EV Max and how it fared when it comes to rupees per kilometer that you have to spend while charging the car. So let's take the total distance that we travelled in the Nexon as 700 kilometers. Now to do those 700 kilometers and the four charges that we did, we used up a total of 2,486 rupees. And now if you do the match, that comes to 4.06 rupees per kilometer. A very impressive feat considering that the infrastructure is still a work in progress. Now first of all, the 700 kilometers that we did in the Nexon EV Max is with a little bit of an asterisk. So please take this information with a grain of salt. So 2,486 rupees and 700 kilometers that roughly equates to 4.06 rupees per kilometer. A very impressive feat considering that the Nexon EV Max and the infrastructure around EVs currently in India is a work in progress. Now, if you take the same equation and you use it for a diesel car, so let's consider the fuel economy of the diesel car to be 20 kmpl. And if you do the math, it comes to 4.6 rupees per kilometer. And if you want to go a little bit more stricter with the fuel economy of the diesel and take the fuel economy as uh, 18 kmpl, it comes to 5.1 rupees per kilometer. And if you do the same math with a petrol car, then the cost goes to 6.6 .6 rupees per kilometer. So yes, an EV is definitely more cheaper to run than a diesel car and a petrol car depending on what sort of math you use. Now overall our experience with the Tata Nexon EV Max was a really interesting one. We first of all thoroughly enjoyed the way the car drove, the comfort of the car and just the overall experience that the Nexon EV Max gave. It's a much more luxurious and a much more plush experience compared to a normal petrol or diesel Nexon and that's down to the amazing interiors that this particular variant of the Nexon EV Max had. Moreover, the silence of an EV is definitely next level. Like even if you compare it to any refined petrol engine, the silence and the comfort and the noise levels of an EV are just too quiet. I mean, you don't understand if the car is on, off, whatever. Yes, when you put it in sports mode, it makes kind of like this cool whirring noise, but overall, it's just a very calm experience. Now, once EVs get a little bit more normalized into the Indian market, I'm pretty sure that this 4.06 rupees per kilometer will drop down even further. Moreover, this was all at charging stations. So, of course, you're going to be paying a premium. And I'm pretty sure that most EVs that are going to be used on a daily basis are going to be used in a city. So, if you consider that, then the only bill that you're going to be, have to be paying is your electricity bill. Now, unfortunately, we did not have the car for that long enough to calculate the difference between what your monthly electricity bill cost is going to be but I'm pretty sure that is going to be definitely much more uh, economical if you compare it to charging it at a standalone charging station. So yes, for now EVs are a great option for an urban cruiser. I mean the Nexon EV Max is probably one of the best urban cruisers that you can get currently in the market. It's super cheap to run if you consider the 4.06 rupees per kilometer which in fact is going to be lower if you're going to charge it at home. It's super comfortable, the suspensions are are truly next level. Tata does some different sort of magic with their suspension and it's going to be a very calm experience because you don't want a loud petrol engine or a diesel engine in your daily life. You want a calm car and EVs are probably the best way to do that. So yes, the Nexon EV Max is technically cheaper to run than a diesel and a petrol car and you should definitely consider it as your daily driver. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us in the comments down below if we've done any sort of wrong calculation or if we've done something wrong in terms of driving the Nexon EV Max to get the full potential of the battery out. So comment all of that down below. Tell us your thoughts on the Nexon EV Max and the future for EVs in India. And I'll catch you in the next one.